All right, y'all, it's turkey time today, and uh, in a second here, I'll slow this down and explain what I'm doing, but we've got a spring gobbler here. We're going to do a full fan and feather on a wood plaque. We're going to have the beard. I'm going to have the legs as well. It is, oh, and, and the skull. So you're going to get the full how-to on a bird here, starting right now. All right, here's the wing cut off at the shoulder right here. And then it goes, it'll have three parts to it, two joints, not like us where we just have the one down here, aside from the shoulder, obviously. There's a joint here, and there's another one here. You don't need the one that's at the shoulder there. So we're gonna cut, and there's all this like webbed skin right in there. We're gonna cut it off right at the joint there. It's not gonna dull your knife if you do it right and then get all this stuff off of there as well. Don't worry about, I mean, it's gonna take some feathers with it, but this will all be behind the plaque anyways. Um, and if you're not doing a plaque, um, it's still gonna look just as good when you have it, have it open. You'll still have lots of these little feathers there and you won't be able to tell <laughs> that you took off some of the little ones. So that's what we're gonna do is take off essentially this drumstick right here. All right, if this part looks tough, I'm here to tell you that it's really not. Because uh, all you're going to do is take your knife blade and guide it in between those two bones, and you'll just cut right through joints. It's just like cutting off a, an elk leg at the joint there, just a little bit smaller. And then go ahead with your knife, get out the rest of that meat and tissue on the back side, and just pluck all the little feathers, little wispy dudes that look like they'd be in a down pillow. And then the tail fan is just as easy, but I'm going to slow it down for you so you can see, because you can't leave all that on there for a fan and feather. There's just going to be too much bulk, so you want to cut a good chunk of that off, but still where you got some good layers. All right, here's the tail fan. I saw real fast, just cut off a bunch of what was on the front here, and you still want to keep, there should be usually about three layers, the big fan. And there's kind of a middle one on these spring gobblers anyways. Then you got all this little front plumage, whatever the heck you want to call it. So this is a nice, nice full fan. Good to go there. Here's what you don't need, is you don't need this stuff on the back. You want to just take that up and cut that right off. Right down, you'll be able to feel Kind of where you're at because you don't want to cut these away from the skin or tendons there just these and you'll go through some of the feather needles there that's fine for the most part you want to get it as flat as you can because we'll have to get all of this stuff off of there so that's next is now i'm going to kind of clean this up on the back like we did on the other one get some uh, on the wings i mean get some of these feathers off of here little guys that are really only in the way you're getting it cleaned up don't don't keep going up and taking off those feathers but get it to where you have a nice good view of all that again you don't want to go so far back that you're cutting these feathers away from what's keeping it all together which is this skin and tendons right behind this meat here so do it carefully Watch carefully here, and I'm going to go over it in real time in a second here. But just make sure that your tail is at 180 degrees. It's completely flat across the whole bottom, and that your wings are as well. That you pop those joints open so they're 180 degrees. They're not bent at all. That way they're going to dry in the best position to get on the plaque. All right, here we go. So this is going to sit like this for two weeks. I got this all spread out. This has popped up because I want these bones down as far to the board as I can get. So the salt underneath is still drawing that moisture out. I'm gonna put these in a Ziploc bag by themselves, covered with salt and OxyClean. So get all the moisture and crap out of here. This doesn't take much to dry these out anyways. So not as important with the legs as it is this stuff. Get all the meat and all of that covered. So nothing is 
wet or soft to the touch. When you get that, that's when it starts stinking. So, see you in two weeks. All right. Here, I'm taking it all apart. You want to make sure it's good and dry. But what I didn't mention before is you really only need three screws per wing or tail. I put a screw right in the middle of the joint for each of the wings and then I prop that open. Uh, that's pretty much what's used to prop it open. Whoops. Um, and then I'll have a screw usually at the base of the first feather on each side holding it open. If I need to go up to the second or third because it feels like it's flimsy I'll do that but I do the same on the tail. I'll have a screw right in the middle of the tail there and then up one maybe two feathers near the base though I'll put another screw so it just holds itself open with those screws there dries in place and it it will not move again once that's dried you're good to go so I've got all that salt off there because you want to cover that completely and the wings are then ready to just be cleaned and blow dried and fluffed up so now we can go to the skull here get that all cleaned off just like anything else then it's just getting it in the pot, put some OxyClean in there with it, bring that to a boil. I don't pull the beak off or anything, I don't cut the eyes out. I just get the skin off the head, cut the neck off at the base of the skull, and boil it up. Once it's been in there, turkey are really, really fragile. So it's not like an elk or a mule deer or something or coos deer where you can just boil that for 45 minutes. You want to bring it to a boil for maybe 10 to 15 minutes, but not crazy hot. And then you really need to be careful. It's a pretty crude way to do it, but you really got to be careful with power washing it off. But get as much of the meat and stuff off as you can, and then do the process again with the developer. Here's where it really gets fun with turkey, though, is cleaning the wings. There I just have regular old Dawn dish soap. I take the wing through it, swirl it around. If there's any crusty places I know of, I'll get the feathers in between my fingers and get that out of there. Dawn is good because it cleans it real well. It's real gentle. And in my experience, it just does the best job of cleaning it. So what you want to do is take a blow dryer. If it has a cool setting, that is the best. The warmer the air gets, the more the feathers will curl at the end not the wings but the tail fan mostly these you can pretty much do whatever to and they're uh, they're pretty tough but you want to go through and blow dry it go as I say with the grain and just showing you how I do that here you just take the blow dry really simple just go with the direction that the feathers are going so you don't blow it around in the beginning when it's super wet it doesn't really matter you can pretty much do it however you want. But once it starts to get dry, you want to go with the feathers. So you're blow drying it nice and flat and straight. Because pretty much how it dries is how you can get it to, to stay. So you want it to dry in a good flat position. Here's the beast. This is the one that's going to give you trouble is the tail fan here. They're the hardest feathers really to get dry or they take the longest anyways. Same rules though, get it pretty dry, get it to where it's not sopping wet, and then start drying it with the grain like this. And it works best to have a good flat surface, and I like to pull it towards me as I do it. It almost, I don't know, maybe I'm crazy, but it almost feels like I'm combing the, fan, the feathers with it, and I feel like I'm able to keep it flatter more better. This blow dryer doesn't have a cool setting, so I just keep it as cool as I can, which is warm, and get it done to the, to the best of my abilities to where it's not curling up a ton at the end. But there's a solution for that too, and we'll get to that. But we'll get this good and dry and nice and flat. But when you get to the end here, and it starts to get more and more dry, you'll be using your fingers, flattening it out, straightening it out, getting it nice and even and unclumped as it dries as much or more than you're going to be using the blow dryer so once you get close to it being good and dry you're going to want to do a lot of work with your hands getting it looking the way you want it to look all right i have to apologize i missed the part putting the tail fan on so i'll just talk about that that's honestly the easiest part um these plaques that i buy they come with a washer so i got a big long screw probably about two inches long that come with a washer as well I mean, if you don't buy a plaque that comes with one you can just go buy one from home depot 
but you want to take that screw with the washer and put the tail fin right in the middle right flat on top where it goes it's really easy really simple and just drill that screw right down in there all right well clearly the video skipped something because of either technical or user difficulties so i'll just tell you what i did come on um i have this big guy here it's a big two by two i can use to cut down i put that down the middle of the back of the plaque I didn't have screws that were the perfect length, so I had to take this drill bit here, just kind of do some reverse engineering, drill down close to halfway through here, so then I could use my inch in and eighth screws, put those down in the holes, screw it, so I've got two, two little anchor points, drilling it to that, and it's about that far into the, into the box, it's probably about halfway through the plaque. So I did that which works out nice because then I'm able to, instead of having the wings right here, lay flat against the plaque and then these curve up way behind the wood and then prevent from going on the wall nice. I'm able to roll them up the two by two a little bit so that they sit a little flatter. It's gonna be pretty close to impossible to not have them swoop back farther than this plane right here but this will do a good job i'm gonna get it up on the wall and see how it looks and now we're just waiting for the skull all right and then all you want to do get that on there is just make sure everything's good and anchored down so i'll put a few extra screws in there it's not necessary but i do it anyways make sure it's not going to move anywhere sometimes i'll even put some jb weld on there to make sure the feathers don't move it stays against the wood so we're good to go and then it's just time to get the legs and the beard in there. Uh, I cut the legs off below the knee joint so it fits into the leg holes real easy. You can buy plaques with leg holes or you can stick them in behind the plaque in between the um, tail fan and the plaque. But the hot glue works perfect. They don't ever move. Now we're back to the skull. After I do the second developer boil, I didn't power wash it again because it was going to fall apart. I just leave it in a jar with warm developer for 24 hours and then I rinse it all off with hot water. And then that's pretty much done as far as the cleaning and whitening of the skull goes. You don't have to put it back out in the sun for another day. But after you do rinse it off, just make sure it gets completely dry before you do anything else to it. All right, because that time lapse I'm sure is super comprehensive. Uh, just show you real quick. So on this one usually it touches in one or two spots on the like beak Connecting the lower to the upper here. It's mostly on this side So I just put some super glue on this side where I know it's touching and then back here at the back It touches on this side, but not this side and again. Sometimes it's both sometimes it's not and then just put a little bit there and then this will never go anywhere unless someone's you know, Horrible kid gets it and decides wants to like I don't know, play ball in the house with it. Not that that's happened to me or any of my friends or anything. But that's it. Pretty simple, pretty easy. All right, now we're going to get the turkey skull onto the wood plaque here. So I'm just taking one of these little ball hangers. You can kind of see it's these little guys they curve in. And, you know, this, this back part here would be on the wall. You just hang, like, your picture or whatever with the wire right there. I'm going to use this. I'll show you how to get the turkey skull onto the wood plaque, and it's the best way I've found to get up over this little nub right here. Because when you look at it, the way it's supposed to sit on the wall, there's just not a nail that's going to go straight through that little hole without, you know, boring that little nub out. So this allows you to get up and over it. We're going to shape it, and that way the turkey skull can be on there. And I like it to be removable so they can take it off and look at it instead of it being stationary on the plaque. All right, I'll try and show you this as best I can. So this is about what it looks like because you want to, again, make sure that this little bump goes over that little bump and gets in the skull. So it kind of fits in nice and easy like that. So you got something in there holding it on. There you go. 
pretty simple. Really is, really is pretty simple. The part that's not simple if you have big fat fingers like me is then nailing it on to the plaque. But get that on there however you need to and then make sure you bend it back into place so that skull is going to be nice and secure. All right, here's what we got. So get this on there. You want it to go down so it disappears behind the skull so it kind of looks like it's floating. But then just that. So that gives it a little bit of room to go over that little bump I showed you on the skull and then flip back up to give it just a little bit something to hold on to. And that'll hold it pretty good. You won't want to put it on there and then shake this thing around. But you can put it on there and leave it there and it'll stay up when it's on the wall no problem all right well we're all finished up here and as you can see it's really not a difficult process um it's just detailed and involved and there's specific things that you need to do to make sure that it's cured and dried and you're not going to have legs that are still hardening up and stinking in your house or anything so it's a easy process but it's still a process but uh, this is probably my favorite looking trophy you know more so than any european or shoulder mount or anything out there or even full-size mounted bird these are just so good looking i i love them so there you have it next time you get a bird don't just keep the beard or just do the tail fan do the whole dang thing legs and all and have yourself a primo looking trophy and thanks for watching that that's all folks happy hunting